Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Okay, so now we're moving on to something called component swapping and we are now slide 160. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce to you the technique of component swapping it's very common sense but it has a procedure that you need to follow that's really really important so we need to just articulate the procedure and component swapping is going to be followed by something called pairwise comparison so we're going to do those two you're going to see those two techniques really used together I have to say sometimes in case studies uh, when people use component swapping, I've never needed to use the second technique, pairwise, but pairwise is super useful as a technique on its own for analyzing sometimes um, uh, random data, historical data that you already have. And pairwise comparison is just a great technique to use on its own, whether you use it with component swapping or not. So let's introduce component swapping to you. Now traditionally, I've got a product here, look. Traditionally, where I would advise the use of component swapping is when you have a finished item like this um, and you're doing an end of line test on the item. So the little example I'm gonna give you here, look. We have a, a computer projector. Uh, we finished the computer projector. And as a final test, one of the things we're doing is we're testing the light levels that come out of the lens at the end of the line. And what we're finding is we're getting a chronic reject rate. We keep getting problems with rejects for low light levels coming out of this item. Now, obviously, this thing is built of, I mean, possibly, especially with the electronics, there might be a thousand items in this. And you've got a chronic problem and you gotta figure out what is it that's doing this? What could we change? What could we improve to get rid of this chronic reject rate? Now this is a great technique. It's a great situation for component swapping. So we're gonna use this as a little example and I'm gonna take you through the idea of what you would do. So here we go. We're gonna talk component swapping. As I mentioned, you know, component swapping. As I mentioned, it's quite common sense in some ways, and people might have tried this in a commonsensical way, um, you know, just as, a, just as a technique to try. It's an obvious technique to try, but there are some rules that are really important that make the technique valid and work best. So here we have our we have our projector, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to split split the item into multiple components. So let's have a think what might be let's have a think what might be in this thing. There it is. Um, so we might test. the lens and bulb assembly. So that might be one of the things that we're gonna swap. We might swap out maybe the power, maybe the power board. Yeah, so maybe the circuit's doing this. We might swap out power supply um, let's think and we might have let's say we've got a CPU in this so we've got some kind of control unit in this 
and we might decide to swap out the CPU board. Okay, so you can see what we're doing. We've started. We've started with a single item. It's got a thousand. It's got a thousand parts in there. So you're starting almost up here with, you know, one thousand components. And then what we're going to do maybe is home in. Let's say it's the power board that's causing the problem. Now maybe there's only, maybe there's a hundred components. Maybe there's a hundred components on the power board. So we've immediately come down and focused very quickly on only a tenth of the product. And then using pairwise, we can find maybe the thing that is a, uh, in Chaining's words, he talks about finding the red X. Yeah, so what he's trying to find is something called the red X. An easy way to, what's he really talking about? He's trying to find the root cause that's, that's causing this problem. The one thing that you can adjust and correct the problem. Okay, so so that's the that's the basis of that's the basis of component swapping. But as you can see on slide 160, we've got a few rules that we want you to follow. So the first rule being, well, you've got to decide on a quality characteristic that you're going to um, you're going to track or you're going to improve. Now in our case, we're going to track light. So we are going to measure lumens. Now a key point here, the, the thing that you're interested in must be variable data. So if you don't have a variable measure of the output, you need to invent one. Now Shanin, who popularized all this stuff, he said everything is measurable. All right, so he worked for NASA, so I suppose, you know, when you've got money to spend like that, everything is measurable. He said everything can, can be converted into an energetic measure. So if you're measuring strength, for instance, obviously, you put a force on there, that's, a, that's an energy measure. In this case, we're measuring light, that's an energy measure. If what you're doing is breaking the item in service, well, you could cycle it. You could put it on a vibration tester. Well, that's energy. You could say, how many hours does it last? That's an energetic measure. But they're all, they're all variable. They're all continuous data. It's got to be continuous data. So that's the first thing. Select a measure that's, that's continuous data. Then what you've got to do is identify these things that we talked about earlier. Now, they've got to be practical. Now, what practical means is if you've glued something together, you're typically not going to break that apart and glue it again, break it apart and glue it again. So for instance, if, if the lens and the bulb, there's some, there's some one way fixing, maybe something's been riveted in, that's a one way fix. We don't want to go grinding rivets off and things like that and breaking plastic covers to try and get it apart. If these two are fixed together, then they're fixed together and they have to be swapped as an assembly. It's got to be practical. You're literally just taking a few screws out, taking a few leads off, moving the item, screws and leads back on. Practical set of parts to swap. Usually they talk between 4 and 10. But I don't know any reason to stop at 10. If you had a few more than that, I don't think it would matter. Okay, so that's, that's rule number two. Then the next thing it says is, you've got to select some items to do the test on. All right, you've got to select some items. Now here's the advice, this is beautiful. This is a great piece of advice. What they say is you've got to select Bob and Wow. So you're picking two items, one's called Bob and one's called Wow. Okay, so let me show you what Bob versus Wow actually means. So here we've got our performance data. So this is lumens performance. Let's say, I don't know, the last thousand 
the last thousand pieces maybe. Of course, we have a tolerance here and you've got the defects sitting in the tail there. That's the chronic problem that we're trying to, that we're trying to fix. Now of course it would be very easy because we have pass fail here, because we have a tolerance, it would be very easy to say, we'll take one from here and one from there. But look at these two. They are a pass and a fail, but here's the question. Are they different? If you analyzed the pass and you analyzed the fail, would you be able to see any difference probably in all the components? The answer is probably no, because they're almost identical. You just pick them either side of that, that boundary line. So here's what Bob and Wow stands for. Bob stands for best of best. Wow stands for worst of worst. Now what this is basically doing is putting a massive signal in the data. It creates a massive data signal. It's a brilliant thing to do. It's one of the cleverest things that Shane ever came up with. The, the bob and the wow. Because what he's going to do, he's going to say, look, take one from this region, take one from this region, and make these two pieces as different as you can make them. And then when you go looking for the component difference, the likelihood is because they have such a different result, you are going to find the component difference that will help you to solve this problem. Bob versus Wow, crucial to making component swapping a success. Then what you're going to do is you're going to measure, you're going to measure your two pieces. So you've got two of these. You're going to just measure them. So we're going to get an original measurement and an original measurement. Then what we'll do is we'll take them to pieces. So we'll split them into these four components, take them to bits, but we won't swap anything at this point. We'll just build them back together. We'll build them back together and we'll remeasure them. So what will happen is this, look, you've got a, you've got a performance graph. We've taken the best of the best the original measurement. Now think about it, when you screw it back together and remeasure it, what will happen? You won't get an exact same result. You'll get something similar. Maybe there. Then of course you do the worst of the worst. Measure it, screw it back together, measure it. Get a slight little bit of noise. The noise is created by the measurement system and the assembly process, etc. And then what, what you're asked to do next, this difference here would be classed as noise. The difference between the two averages would be classed as signal. And what you're going to do next is to divide the noise into the signal and you're looking for a ratio 5 to 1 or more okay now what's that telling you it's giving you the amount of noise that's created by the assembly process so this problem could be in the parts but it could be the way you've screwed the parts together and by stripping one down and just rebuilding it, stripping the other one down and just rebuilding it, you will create assembly and measurement noise. And if the assembly and measurement noise is too big, the problem isn't with the parts. It's the way you're screwing the item together or it's the way you're measuring the item. This is a super clever little technique. Now, Shane doesn't call it signal to noise, but it is signal to noise. They call it Big D 
to little d ratio. All right, that's what they call it. You can see it in the instructions there. And little d is the noise. Big D is the signal. Okay, so you're literally just working out the average of these two, dividing it into the difference, and you've got to get five to one or more. All right, so, and again, that's crucial. So, Bob and Wow, crucial. Big D, little d, crucial. Because you're trying to decide, is it the parts or the assembly method? And big D to little d will tell you that. If it was the assembly method, stop this and go and work on the assembly line or in the manufacturing process somewhere. You need to look much deeper in this situation if it's your assembly method, all right? So they're the basic instructions. And then of course, once we've got to this point and we're ready to do the swap, well, what do we do? Well, now we go, let's swap out A and measure the result. Then we put A back, let's swap out B and measure the result. Then we put B back. Then we swap out C. Then we swap out D. And then we simply plot the results. So what you should see is something like this. You swap out A. So this is, um, obviously this is the best up here. Bob's up here. Wow, he's down here. Swap out A, then you swap out B. Maybe it moves a little bit. Then you swap out C. Then you swap out D. And what we're looking for in the graph is the component that makes the results swap over. This here is potentially where your root cause sits. So in our case, it was item C. We're saying it's the power supply. And then what we've got to do is do some detailed analysis of the power supply to see what, what is causing the the problem but that would be your first um, port of call by the way the last thing that you normally do on the end of this performance is repeat the result so in other words change C again and have the result swap over again like this so again you've swapped the result over and then again you put the put C back and again it returns to normal so in other words you're, you're repeating this it wasn't a lucky result it wasn't an error on the measurement system so you're doing at the end here you're doing what I would call a confirmation test so it wasn't just a happy accident one data point you're proving that it, it works time and again okay so so there is your component swapping, and now you're ready for further analysis into the component supply. So, Bob, key points. Bob versus wow, important. Make the parts as different as possible. Decide on your four or five or six or seven little assemblies that you're gonna swap in and out. Make sure you have continuous data on the measurement do the signal to noise test that's proving that the problem is in the component tree and then do the test and do the confirmation test. They are the key elements of component swapping.